of Psalm 119, 119 chapter. I just want to look at a few verses. from this book of Sam. Verse 64. One way of first, a couple of verses Before I get into the message, or something. the earth, O oh Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Thou hast dealt, dealt well with thy servant, O oh Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted and went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy stature. The proud have fought your lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole hand. The hand is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn thy stature. Let me read it again. Verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy stature. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hope in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgment are right and, and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. I know, O oh Lord, that thy judgment are right, and that thou in faithfulness, somebody say faithfulness, in faithfulness thou has afflicted me. I want to thank God for his word this morning, and I want to share with you on, a, on the thought of coming out of the wilderness in power. Coming out of the wilderness in power. I want you to know this morning that we are undoubtedly headed into perilous times. For some, we are facing perilous times, but we got to understand that we are heading into perilous times. Professing followers of Christ this morning who have embraced only feel-good theology in its various form and fashion may have unwittingly fed with a spiritual diet that will leave them without the strength needed to face the coming storms or perils of life. In other words, if you don't have the right spiritual diet, when times of difficulties or, or the perilous times when it come, we will not be able to stand because of the poor diet that we have. Even in natural, we are encouraged to have a proper diet. And there is much reason for that. Because if we don't have a proper diet, we will not be able to function 100%. Is that so? And so therefore, in the spiritual life, we need a proper spiritual diet. As we have read in this passage this morning in Psalm 119, as we have read from verse 61 to verse 75, the concept or indication of this passage of scripture speaks of the spiritual understanding of a righteous person who was led by the hand of God into a place of humility, a place of weakness, and a place of despair. 
And this person who is righteous, as we understand, the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. How many believe that? When you're living for God, God will order your footstep. He will order your path, but we come to understand that even in a God-given, amen, as He have decreed and ordered your footstep, even in a God-ordered footstep, there were still going to be perils, there are still going to be storms, there's still going to be conflicts, there are still going to be barriers, there's going to be storms in our lives. Are you hearing me this morning? Each one of us, regardless of how strong we are in faith, we go through difficulties from day to day. Nobody is exempted from the problems of life. Problems are going to come. It's just part of life. We can't pray it away. It's going to come. But we got to learn, amen, how to have the right attitude when we are going through, amen, the difficulties of life. He states that in the time of affliction, he learned both the power of God's word and his, and his unfailing faithfulness. I want you to know, beloved, this morning, that God's intention, amen, and his plan for us and his purpose for our life, that when we go through the difficult times this morning, we will come to this understanding that we will learn both of the power of God's word and his unfailing faithfulness towards us. Are you hearing me? Somebody say, God is faithful. That's why we have read that I know, O oh Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou in, the, in faithfulness has afflicted me. God is faithful. So whatever God allow you to go through, even though it seems harsh and difficult, it is because of God's faithfulness He allowing you to go through this. So if He's allowing me to go through a certain situation in life, then there must be a plan and a purpose for it. Are you hearing me? I want you to know this morning, establishing our spiritual identity is the cornerstone of life. And it was for Jesus. That's why it is important for every believer, those who have declared that I'm a child of God, that you really know who you are in God. Jesus, before that he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us that God, when he was baptized amen, by, by John the Baptist in the river Jordan, the Bible says the heavens open and the voice of God spoke and says, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus hearing his father declare it. Jesus understand, amen, and had a great understanding of who he is and who he was. Before we can go through, amen, our situations in life and come on victorious, amen, we must understand who we are in God. Understanding who we are in God will bring us to a place to understand, amen, the power that is available, the authority that is available to us this morning. Are you hearing me this morning? When you know you are a child of God, you are not just a child of God that is, uh, that is defeated. You are a child of God that God has declared to you victory in every situation. Are you hearing me this morning? Many times we are defeated because we don't know who we are. And so therefore, establishing our spiritual identity is the cornerstone of our life this morning. The Bible tells us a wise man built his house upon a rock. The elements will come against that house, but the Bible says a wise man who built on the rock, his house is going to stand. And so therefore, when we are building, we must build on the rock. And when we build on the rock, God considers us to be wise this morning. So therefore, as we are going through life, we must build, amen, on the wisdom of the scriptures this morning. We must build on the words that God has declared to us this morning. So when the storms of life come, amen, we will be able to stand. I you me this morning? I will be dealing with the power of God found in the wilderness. As we meditate fully on the truths that you will hear this morning, the goodness of the Lord Jesus has you exactly where you are today. Are you hearing me this morning? The goodness of Jesus has you where you are today. 
But are you saying, Pastor? I will clarify some things as we go along. If you have an honest and searching heart this morning, the power of God that will come to you ensures that you will be able to stand with the confidence and with the trust in the love of an unfailing Savior. As we approach this message this morning, coming out of the wilderness, it means to say that if we're coming out of the wilderness at one point in time or a period of time in our life, we'll be going into the wilderness. Are you hearing me? Many are the times of Jesus that we seen through scripture that Jesus went in the wilderness. The term wilderness, or we said, we we'll say like this, I'm going through a wilderness experience. And so I want to break that down for you this morning. The term wilderness experience rarely, if ever, meets a time of or place of leisure. A wilderness certainly is no oasis. In fact, by definition this morning, it is a remote environment devoid of all outward appeal, hope, or comfort. It is devoid of all of that. It is a hostile place where few would willingly go. That's why believers today, they do not want to go into the desert or they don't want to go to the wilderness experience. Everybody wants to stay on top of the mountain and declare how great God is. And that is wonderful. Especially when God is blessing you. But in times when you cannot understand what is happening, the times when you are experiencing in and some, some squeezing in your life, Nobody wants to go through the wilderness experience because it's uh, the wilderness is a hostile place amen, where few would willingly go. Most of us actually would resist going into the wilderness this morning. Yet that is exactly where God sent his son. Are you hearing? We are refusing to go, but it is where God has sent Jesus Christ send him into the wilderness so let's break that down a little bit this morning because we may say i don't want to go through the wilderness in my life in fact there is two words in the two words in the hebrew it says the word for wilderness is midbar which speaks about two experiences it talks about the wilderness and it talks about the desert but in reference to what we don't want to go through the wilderness experience we pray because we want to draw closer to God. We pray prayers such as, Lord, make me. God, break me. God, amen, uh, fill me. We pray this type of prayer. But understanding what we are praying is actually saying, God, take me in the wilderness. Are you hearing me this morning? And so therefore this one, the wilderness experience is not a denial of God's blessing. Because many are, many are the mindset of the believers today that the wilderness is not a blessing. The, the, the denial is that saying that it is not the wilderness experience is not God's blessing. It is, I want you to know, the wilderness experience, it is the outworking of God's blessing. It is the outworking of God's blessing. By definition, we will, we will clarify some things as we're going on. The wilderness also, I want you to know, as we take in reference, the wilderness in the Hebrew, it talks about, it is a place, amen, where we hear voice, a song. It is a place that in, in the Hebrew translation, it speaks of speech. The wilderness in terminology in the Hebrew word speaks of speech. In other words, what God is saying to us, if we come to the maturity and understanding of His Word, that when we are going to the wilderness experience, the wilderness is a place we will hear God's voice when the senses are silent. Are you hearing me? So therefore, the wilderness is a place you're going to hear God's voice. Also, the number definition in the Hebrew, for the word, amen, wilderness, it speaks about pasture. It talks about inhabited land. It speaks about pasture. And when we read it, according to the Psalm 1, it talks about, amen, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He will lead me where? He 
will, he will make me to lie down in what green pastures. He will lead me beside the still waters. And therefore, when we understand the shepherd leading the sheep, we may just think about, amen, amen, a nice, amen, flat piece of land where there is grass that is growing. But many of the times when the shepherd is leading the sheep, it's through difficult terrain. And he will come to a place in the terrain of difficulties where there is grass that is growing and he's able to feed the sheep. Amen. And there will be water that is running so that the sheep can drink. So the concept of the wilderness that the church had been taught, amen, is wrong. Because we try to avoid or, or try to prevent ourselves from going into wilderness when the example of Jesus' life shows us that God himself led Jesus into the wilderness. Are you hearing me? In other words, it talks about when the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word for wilderness, midbar, it speaks about pasture. It tells us that God will take you into the wilderness so that he can feed you. Hello, somebody. He will take you into the wilderness to feed you. By definition, our wilderness might be called for us in this present time and situation, it may be called fear, it may be called depression, it may be called doubt. For some, it may be pain and sorrow, self condemnation, loneliness for many, lack, hopelessness this morning, joblessness. These are some of the things that your wilderness can be called. In the very midst of all of us, just as it was for Jesus, it's where he hear God speak. And I want you to know, if you're going to your wilderness, whatever that wilderness is called, God will speak. Are you hearing me this morning? God can speak to you in the midst of your pain. God can speak to you in the midst of your circumstances. How many believe that this morning? Here we learn not to be impressed with devilish thoughts when we, are lead, when we are led into the wilderness. Beliefs of material senses, calling by whatever name or nature. Because when you go into the wilderness, you don't care about the outside voices, you want to hear what God has to say. God will allow you to go to the wilderness experience because he wants to get your attention. Are you following me this morning? And so therefore we must understand that the wilderness experience is not a crucible, but an opportunity for application. Are you hearing me this morning? Take this in note, it is an opportunity for application this morning. Because in, in, the, in today's lingo, it's a total workout for the believer. And many times, God wants to, you to have a total workout. What are you saying, Pastor? I am saying is that we cannot pray God to remove the wilderness, but we got to understand when God takes us into the wilderness, it will be a total workout. In other words, you have this morning, amen, the opportunity for application. What are you saying? I am saying is that everything that you learn as a believer, when you're going through your wilderness experience, instead of con uh, confessing negativity, you gotta start confessing what God's word says. Are you hearing me this morning? When you're going through difficult times, you gotta profess what God says. God is my Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. When when I'm when I'm hungry, Amen. You can confess what God's word says. Amen. He shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. Can I get a witness, somebody? You got to Amen to apply. Amen. It is the right opportunity to apply what God would is saying when you're going through your wilderness experience. I hear me this morning. So it's not a crucible, but it's an opportunity for application. Are you following me this morning? Another word that speaks to us in definition. The English word terminology for the word wilderness it speaks about and it breaks the word up into two. And it speaks about wild animals. Are you hear me? It speaks about wild animals. So in other words, the concept or the, the, the imagery that we're getting, the Bible tells us that Jesus said, I've placed you as sheep among the wolves. Are you hearing me this morning? So the imagery is saying that when we go through the wilderness, there will always be things that is coming against you. Amen. Even though it's a plan of God, even though God is a lead in you, I want you to know there will be animals that is coming after you. There will be satanic attacks that is coming after you. There will be things that is coming after you. 
after you and it becomes it wants to destroy your life but the purpose of the wilderness is to not only that you hear God speak but you get nourishing your spirit amen so that you'll come out of the wilderness and come out in power and strength and the glory of God this morning somebody shout hallelujah so God wants us to go to the wilderness in fact my scripture tells me and my Bible afford me this understanding that God lead his son into the wilderness. The wilderness is the best place for spiritual breakthrough. Somebody write that down. You want spiritual breakthrough? The wilderness is the place to experience spiritual breakthrough. Here we see the Bible tells us that God led his son into the wilderness. Those watching by the internet, this, this is important to know. Because before Jesus began his public ministry, John baptized him in the Jordan River. And as he came up the water, as I said before, the voice of God spoke audibly from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, and thee am well pleased. This is his father affirmation that you are my beloved son. Are you hearing me? So therefore, in the same token, just as God affirmed that Jesus is his beloved son, when you and I accept Jesus Christ in our heart, because we believe in our heart and we confess with the mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ, to them he gave power to become the son of God. That is an affirmation that because of your belief, God now confirmed that you are son and daughter of the kingdom of God. Somebody say how to you. God wants to bring you to a place where you begin to understand why you go to hard times. Because none of us is exempted from hard times. Whether you have more money than me, whether you have a better car than me, whether you dress better than me, whether your educational standards are better, it doesn't matter. Because in the playing field, all of us experience tough times and difficult times. Are you following me this morning? Simultaneously, when this experience took place, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, descended upon Jesus in the form of a dove and powered him for service. This event preceded Jesus' experience of the desert. So before Jesus was led in the wilderness, we don't only have the Father affirmation, amen, that this is my beloved son, but we see here that the Holy Spirit descended upon him. Are you following me this morning? You might assume that after this, that took this, this event, that Jesus would immediately go into the ministry. But this was not the case. Because not only there was an affirmation, there was an empowerment of his life by the Holy Spirit. Well, take for instance, if we were in that position and we are called and God affirms us that who we are and then empowers us, the first thing that we want to do is to do ministry. Many people have taken that stand because of the affirmation and because of the anointing or the, or the, 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 the Holy Spirit, amen, descending upon them and they experience the empowerment, they want to go into ministry. I hear you. But let's look at some things in the Bible for our understanding and clarity when we're going through the wilderness experience. This was not the case of Jesus. Because in Luke chapter 4 verse 1 it says, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. It was ministry. It was in the wilderness. Jesus embraced this barren setting as a positive rather than a negative experience in life. When you're going through the wilderness, do you see it as a positive experience or do you see it as a negative experience? We got to learn from the life of Jesus. When Jesus was being led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness, he embraced this barren setting. He embraced it as a positive rather than a negative this morning. So therefore this morning, as a church, we need to look closely to the truth of this example. 
and consider this morning whether we too will allow God amen, to use our time spent in the wilderness as a means of knowing him in a greater measure. And if you're going to in a wilderness experience and you were at some point in your life, because every person who is a child of God, there will be wilderness experience from time to time. There will be intervals, but you will go through wilderness experience. I hear me this morning. And so therefore, we need to understand what is taking place this morning. Jesus, not only did at this moment in time, that by after being affirmed, and the Spirit of God coming upon him was led into the wilderness. That is not the only time. But Jesus continually returned to the wilderness. Let me read it. Luke chapter 4, verse 40 to 42. It says, Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers disease brought them into him, unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them, and he healed them. And the devils also came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into the desert place. As I said, there's two words that confirm wilderness. One is desert, and the other is simply wilderness. So after all of what Jesus has done, Jesus voluntarily returned again and again in the wilderness after healing the multitude and bringing deliverance to the oppressed. Are you following me this morning? Luke 5 verse 15 to verse 16 says, But so much the more when there a fame abroad of him, a great multitude came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Do you see what I'm saying this morning? It was not a one-time event that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness, but we see Jesus voluntarily went into the wilderness. He went into the desert place. So there must be a lesson, there must be some principle why he went into the wilderness voluntarily so that we could come to a greater understanding when we are going through our wilderness experience this morning. When Jesus' frame, fame spread abroad, he again headed for the sanctity of the wilderness this morning. He understood the need this morning to establish this morning God as a sole source of strength. Are you hearing me? He wants to establish that God is his sole source of strength. And this would continually give God all the glory and the honor. They say when God does something for you, when you know that you're overcome, you didn't overcome by self, you overcome because God is the sole, the sole strength of your life. He is the one that gives you the strength to overcome. And when you recognize and declare that, you are giving God the glory. Amen. We are here on the earth to give God glory. Amen. Are you with me this morning? And so we see many of us do not want, or many other Christians or the church folks this morning, do not want to embrace what Jesus is clearly showing us. That the wilderness is not to be avoided, but rather should be accepted and understood. Are you hearing me? We need to teach our people the right way. Because we grew up, and I grew up hearing, that when you give your life to Jesus, Jesus will take care of all of your problems. From small, I hear, keep hearing, give your life to Jesus and he will take away all your problems. But I'm a man now, amen, I have a family of my own and I want you to know I have problems, amen, but I still experience difficult times and I love Jesus. Yes. And when you have a mindset of that, it's not that Jesus can take up, can, can I, come in and take away a problem, but we got to have some understanding what the scripture is teaching us this morning. As a believer, ask yourself the question, why did Jesus keep going back to such a harsh and un uninviting place? 
Could it be that God was revealing something of his strength in that place? Was Jesus receiving a hidden treasure from God which the natural mind could not comprehend? If we have this understanding that there is something that Jesus received every time that he would go into the wilderness and he's coming out amen, of the wilderness with more power, would you want to go? If you decide to be filled with the power of God, would you want to go into the wilderness and tap into the very thing that he's receiving? Amen. I believe that God wants to bring you to a place where you and I begin to understand why we go through difficult and hard times. In the Bible, there are many illustrations, for example, that illustrate what God can accomplish in the wilderness. And for a few minutes this morning, I want to go through a few examples. But let me remind you as you go through these examples from scripture. If you look with your natural vision, the wilderness can seem an unlikely place to find God. Uh -huh. So in other words, we're not going to approach this from mere eyesight. I fall. Because if you try to see this from just your natural eyesight, the wilderness will not be a place that you want to go. I hear it this morning. God lead his people into the wilderness. But Israel was held captive in Egypt. God said to Moses, Moses, go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Three days journey into the wilderness, according to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 18. Three days into the countryside was far enough for them to be out of the reach from everything which bound them or offered, amen, creature comfort. So in other words, God had to take them to a place, amen, far enough so the things of the world can reach them. Amen. Follow me this morning. Little did they know that this place that called the wilderness that God is going to lead them will become a place of incredible worship and provision for them. Are you hearing me? You see, because when you learn to dance, when you learn to dance and sing in the wilderness, are you hearing me? I want you to know, when you come in that place when everything is going good, amen, amen, we know how already how to perform or how to enjoy yourself when everything is going good. But the true believer this morning knows how to have a good time in the midst of your wilderness experience. You want to see the strength of an individual? See how they react or respond when they're going through the wilderness of life. And here it is, this place that God took them will become a place, amen, of incredible worship this morning and provision for their life. Here they will witness God, witness God's might as he fought for them and give them a great deliverance. It was in the wilderness that God delivered them. Are you hearing this one? Pharaoh, who represented natural man, only saw a weak, beggarly people trapped in the desert. Confused and directionless. Are you hearing me? That's because he's watching with the natural eyes. But as believers, God don't want us to watch with the natural eyes. Hear what Pharaoh says in Exodus 4 and verse 3. He said to his commanders, Gather together the chariots and the weapons because we are going after them. They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. But here it is the very thing that Pharaoh is declaring and saying there are people who are beggarly, they are directionless, amen, they don't know where they're going, they're hopeless. That is the same place that God told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Uh-huh. Follow me this morning. Pharaoh wrongly interpret what God was doing with his chosen people. He could not see God in the wilderness. In the end, and his men's horse of horsemen 
were defeated in the Red Sea and the Israelite triumphant. I hear. Because what he saw, amen, with a natural eye, he could not perceive God was the one that was leading him. I hear. If you're a child of God today, your natural eyes will tell you if it things are bad, it's not going good, it may be hopeless. But when you understand, amen, that you are a child of God, wherever God takes you, wherever God is leading you, he has a purpose for it. My life is not over until he says so. And if I can understand it, amen, even though I cannot understand, amen, I must not doubt who God is because God is great and he is sovereign this morning. I hear you. If you look only with your natural vision, the wilderness can seem as an unlikely place to find God. The reason why I'm saying is because the Holy Spirit put this in my hand. There's a young, a young group of people who are on fire for God, who have heard God, and who have, the, have made up their mind that we're going to serve God. And I'm here to speak not only to these, this group of people, but every person, amen, who have a heart of God, amen, closer with God, to experience more of God and to be used by God. I want to say to you this morning that God has put it in my heart to declare to you there's going to come a moment in your life, it may be sooner than you think, that God will allow you to go through the wilderness. Are you hearing me this morning? What is a wilderness in, in, in terminology or the desert place? It's a place where there is more, amen, there is less precipitation, amen, and more evaporation. In other words, amen, precipitation is like the rain is not for. But whatever you have is being sapped up, your strength, amen, your energy is being taken from you. Because it seems like, amen, as it, as it, it rains and pours, like problems just keep coming one after the other. Soon as they get on one debt, you have another debt. Are you following what I'm saying? And it seems like the bills are always more and the money is less. This is, I'm trying to break it down for you. There is more evaporation and less precipitation. When that you experience that, it will be a wilderness experience. How many of you are finding yourself in that position? It seems like everything is coming out, but less is coming in. Wilderness experience. But I want you to know there's a reason that God leads us into the wilderness. He leads his people into the wilderness. If you choose to avoid the wilderness in your life, you will never know the supernatural pathway revealed there in the wilderness. Because it's in the wilderness that God gives you direction. It is in the will that God confirm His word. So not only we see that God leads His people into the wilderness, God deals with sin in the wilderness. We don't like to talk about sin. The church today do not want to tell people about sin. And they try to polish up amen, their sermons to just speak to people, to encourage them. But if we got to experience the best that God has for us, we must deal with sin. I must understand this morning that God is holy. And if we sin in our life, we must come to a place to repent of our sin and turn from our wicked ways and be a separated people. We are people who try to serve God today and still want to hold on to the pleasures of this world. There are people who want to live their Christian life, amen, uh, on a Sunday, but live like a heathen for the rest of the week. Are you hearing me? There are people living a life that don't feel condemned. They're doing that, they, what they know is wrong. But on Sunday, they come and lift their hand. You better lift your hands, because thank God you're alive anyway. Yeah. But there's no conviction because when they leave the house on Sunday, they'll go back and they do the same thing for the rest of the week. <laughs> but if you are a person who desire, I am concerned for people to get a higher place in God in your spiritual walk. Yeah. I hear you. I will teach, I will feed, I will correct. But it's for you to grow so 
so that you can come to a place in God that you can experience best. If you do not want to take, if you keep spending all the food and you want to live how you want to live, when you experience some things in your life, don't blame God, don't blame the church, don't blame the pastor. Because every person has to work on their salvation with fear and trembling. Are you hearing me this morning? God deals with sin in the wilderness. In the wilderness, God gives his people the assurance that their sins are forgiven. In the Old Testament, on the Day of Atonement, the priest killed a goat as a sin offering and sprinkled the blood upon the Ark of the Covenant. The priest took a second goat and he called that goat the scapegoat. He placed his hands upon its head and confess the sins of Israel. A strong man is chosen, was then selected to take the scapegoat, which now bore the sins of the people, and release it into a desolate area. According to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 15 to 22. In the desert place, God deals with the sins of the people. In the same way, amen, God uses your wilderness experience to go after hidden or acknowledged sin in your life. There are people who are sinning in their life and there is no condemnation. Or they don't feel the condemnation. They have reached so far, amen, that they have put a, a, a plug in the air when the Spirit of God is speaking to them. Amen. And so therefore the Spirit is talking. Yes. Don't do it. But you continue to do it because you're closing off your air from hearing the Spirit of God. It's not that the Spirit of God is not speaking to you. The Spirit of God will speak to you so that you will turn and separate yourself. But when you keep, amen, being disobedient to God, amen, you will come to a place to experience the judgment of God. Because the same way the Bible tells the book of Hebrews, if you are a son, God will chastise you. And sometimes we feel passionate for people who are being chastised. Leave them as they are. Because when God was speaking to them, they didn't want to obey. You as parents understand what I'm saying. We love our children. And when they do wrong things, we talk to them, or we talk to them, or we talk to them. But when you can't take it anymore, you get the belt, you get the strainer, you get the, the dabla, you get the, 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 the whatever. And you put some licking on the child. It's not that you don't love them. Uh, everybody in fight on But I said God deals with sin in the wilderness. Are you hearing me this morning? As people of God, we wonder why it is that we are the salt of the earth and we have lost its saltiness. Are you hearing me this morning? In His mercy, He takes you there not to harm you, but to deliver you. Are you hearing me? God will take you out in the wilderness. And so that's why sometimes when you're going to the wilderness and God is leading you, you feel all alone. You feel that everybody's against you. It's not that everybody's against you. It's not that the church is against you. It's not that the pastor is against you. It's not that your wife or your husband is against you. God is taking you in the wilderness so that he can deal with you. Yeah. But God is teaching you in the wilderness will enable you to bring down your giants in the future. Are you hearing me? There's some people God needs to pull in the wilderness. How are you representing Christ? How are you representing the Lord this morning in your walk with God? If we could, I say I don't have a problem with the unsaved. Whether the party, whether the club, whether the gamble, whether the random woman do this, do that, or what, I don't have a problem with the unsaved because that is what you do. But when you said that you give your life to Jesus, my Bible tells me in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, I am in your creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want to represent Jesus the best that I can. Is it the reason why that Jesus had to come into the world? Because the first man, Adam, failed in the disobedience. And therefore, when he sinned in his life, you couldn't see the image of God. 
And that's why Jesus had to come into the scene. So when you walk upon planet Earth, amen, he said, if you see me, you see the Father. And if you see the Father, you see me because I am him and he in me this morning. Are you happy this morning? How are you representing Christ in your life? So God teaches us and he brings us into the wilderness so that he could remove the sin and deliver us. I'm not throwing stones at anybody. But we must preach. Amen. Not part of the gospel. We must preach the whole word. Are you hear me this morning? God wants to bless you, yes, but God said don't sin. Are you hear me this morning? We want to hear the blessing. We want the blesser. Amen. We want the blessing, but we don't want the blesser. Amen. Amen. We want to experience and enjoy all the benefits without following directions and protocol. Amen. Are you here? Sin. Sin. You know what sin also? We sin. Sin of omission. Sins of commission. Sometimes the things that you know to do and you don't do it. The good thing that you know to do and it's not doing to them, it becomes sin. A oh, pastor don't know there, that's touchy. People will stay away from children, will not come back here. But if it's one person who will adhere the word of God, everybody leave and one person will still preach. Amen. Because I'm responsible. Because those who know much, much is required from them. I hear me this morning, and I don't want to feel the wrath of God or the belt of God uh, across my back or my behind. Amen. So it's better I tell you what God says, yes. so I can sit on perfectly and calmly. <laughs> because I understand what it is. My teacher, every time you get a, a subject or a, a, a work wrong, he said, "Come up," and he said, "Check your change." That time I didn't have a cent to check, but still check your change. You thought all the Mackey money will come in your pocket, but then you can't. You understand what I'm saying this morning? Sin. You play with sin. The loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. Prestige and power and pleasure. Sin, you will have the answer for it. But that's why God used a willingness to deal with our sinful life so that He could remove it and deliver your life. Not only did God deal with sin in the wilderness, but God reveals His provision in the wilderness. In the wilderness, God displayed His awesome power to provide for His people. Here what Exodus 16 and verse 15 says, And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wished not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord had given you to eat. Manna appeared in a place where there was no delis. There was no key food or, 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 or whatever, grocery that you shop at. There was no fan food joints. No restaurants. The people had to depend on God for their daily sustenance. Are you hearing me? If you ever, if, if you need this morning, you and I, we need to hold of the truth this morning that God provides for your every need and it is now. You got to hold to that truth. God is able to provide for your safety. I say God is able to provide for your every need every day. The Lord has promised to care for you and I. So allow Him to take you to the place where you only, your only resource is Him. So many of you, God is not the only source. You have a family member that have piles of cash. 
so your source is there. You have a friend that you, when you're in need, you can run to them. So God is not your only source. But sometimes God will bring you to a place where all these other sources are not available. And all you have is God. Amen. I hear me this morning. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking to you about something I can or read. I've been in a place where God was all I need and He's everything in me this morning. Remember, for all the scholars here this morning, I'm not fabricating anything, but Jesus, the Bible tells us in the synoptic gospel, that Jesus felt the multitude on a hillside in a desolate area, and he will do the same for you. Just imagine there was multiple, multitude of people, and they were in a, a desolate place. They were looking for food to feed everybody. They couldn't find none except a boy with a, a few loaves and a few fishes. But look what God can do in a wilderness experience to meet the need of everybody this morning. That's how great God is. Somebody say hallelujah. So not only he can meet your needs or provide for you, but God trained David for battle in the wilderness. David was the youngest son of Jesse, was given the task of tending the family sheep. While David watched the flocks graze in the wilderness, God taught him to trust him. That's why wherever you are in your life, whether it you don't like the job or you like the job, wherever you are, you may not be the best that you want, but be faithful where you are. Be faithful when you are. The boss giving you a hard time? Amen. Be faithful. Be faithful where you are. David was faithful where he was. And God and him teach him. God teach him to trust him. When the sheep were attacked by a bear and a lion, the Bible tells us that God enabled David to deliver the lamb out of the mouth of the beast. You read that and you take that simple. But I've been to the zoo. This one in the Bronx, the one in Washington, the couple zoo. And let me tell you some all the faith that I have, and even the name that my mother gave me, David, I will never go in, into the into the, the den where the lines up. Are you hear me? I don't know how much faith you gotta have. But I have that much faith to go in there. Because I see what they could do. So when we read that, just imagine that God is saying that God gave David the enabling power to go take the lamb out of the beast's mouth. You're talking about a bear and you're talking about a lion. And we read that simple. Yeah, I could do that. You really? Yeah. I see some of the ladies if a little mice run across. <laughs> I hear scream of the back when a little road just passed. So imagine a lion and a bear. But later when David visited his brothers on the battlefield, he could not understand why they were letting an evil giant named Goliath belittle the armies of the living God. His brothers pride themselves on being a man of statues with all the right training and experience. While David was looked down upon as a common burden. You know, I could interject something right there. Because people may look at your life differently. Not how God sees you, but how they see you. And people are always look into what your weaknesses and the areas that you slip up and mess up in your life and they, and they give you a name and entitlement. Because of your situation because of the inconsistencies in your life to look at you from that perspective but my Bible tells me and the song right there Andrew Crouch declares he says he looked beyond my thoughts and he saw my need I hear God will see you for who you are because of the conditions of your life but when he sees you 
He sees you as his son and his daughter. Are you hearing me this morning? He sees you as his son and daughter. So his brothers accused him of weaknesses because he was not formally trained in the act of warfare as they were. In essence, this morning, his older brother said, you do not have the armor we possess and you have not had the training we completed. All you have been doing is caring for the animals in the wilderness. I want you to see this this morning. They could not comprehend that God was in the wilderness with David. They could not understand that in the wilderness, David found his strength and confidence in God. David picked up five stones, which God, with God as his source of strength. And he confronted and killed Goliath and his brothers looked on. To their amazement this morning, they saw God use a common herd to defeat the enemy which has terrorized the entire army of Israel this morning. I want you to know you may seem like a nobody amen, in the eyes of people, but you are a giant killer in the sight of God this morning. And God is training you from battle. That when he takes you into the wilderness, he's training you so that you can hear him, you can be nourished by him, you can be strengthened by him, so that you'll be able to trust him this morning. So that you can defeat your giants. I'm going to share one more before we close. We continue path to next week. God raises mighty warriors in the wilderness. King Saul, jealousy, drove David into the wilderness. We know the story well. But yet God raised up a small army this morning of discarded men who were in debt, in distress, and disconnected. Are you hearing me? Under David's leadership, God made these men into mighty warriors. Are you hearing me this morning? mighty warriors and what could have been wasted time of frustration in this young life amen, turned into triumph I hear God used David time and the wilderness to produce steel in the lives of men who otherwise would have been powerless I want you to don't curse your crisis I'm yet to declare that God is taking you to the wilderness amen Amen. Receive the wilderness with joy. Are you hearing me this morning? Because through them, are you hearing me? God, He will shape you into a mighty man or woman who knows how to trust Him even in the dark days ahead of your life. This I'm here to declare this morning that you are being made into a warrior of His kingdom. Your struggles are not wasted with God. In time, you and I, you will look back and know this morning that without the wilderness experiences in your life, you could never have accomplished what he had designed for you. Are you here? Because in his mercies, God will take you to the wilderness where the strongholds that have captivated your heart have dealt with you. Are you here? I want you to know this morning. Church of God, you are a designer original. You are not a carbon copy. You are a designer original. I hear me. I need somebody to hear that. You are a designer original. You know why people pay more money amen, for designer's clothes? Because they don't have another one like it. I hear you. There is nobody like you on planet Earth. You are a designer original. And God will allow you to go to the wilderness in your life because He will use the wilderness experiences to shape you so that you become the person that He wants you to be. Amen. Are you hearing this morning? Amen. We can learn from the life of Jesus this morning. If God can take His Son after affirmation that He is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased, and that just after the Spirit descended upon Him, He didn't go to ministry as yet. But the Holy Spirit take him into the wilderness. It's safe to say you and I will have experiences in the wilderness. 
every time Jesus will do great and mighty things, he will absent himself and go into the wilderness this morning. The wilderness is a place of nourishment. The wilderness is a place, as I said, midpah, the place of speech. The wilderness is a place where God is speaking. Because he has brought you himself. And all the other voices are shut off that you can hear him speak. The will is a place where inhabit pastures. In other words, there was things that God wants to teach you that you don't know. There is places that God wants to take you where you have not been, but it is inhabited. So that's why God has brought you into the wilderness so that you can get a taste in him of what you have not tasted before. That when you taste it, you will see that this is it. Are you hearing this morning, sir? Would you stand to your feet this morning? It's the wilderness.
Take this time, set your hat this morning. Where we are feeling the word and talk and be. If there is a search for God, and no man has to see if there be any wicked wings in it. As we are standing this morning, breathe in us a clean hand. And with your right spirit within us, O God. Take not our way that you be spirit. I don't want to hear it, your Holy Spirit. So take him not away from us. God gave it declares to us as far as the east is from the west. You have removed our transgression from us. Your God who forgives. He says, I will bless the Lord. And forget not all his benefits. For he is the one who redeemed me from destruction. Who heal my disease. This morning we will forget now for you are. That your God who says, God Father, let no man say that he have not sinned. For we make him alive. For all our sin, I even fall short of the glory of God. Father, this morning, as we stand here, God, every person, every human being, under the sun, my brothers. God, in one way or the other, we have failed. And so this morning I ask of you, God, regardless of what it may be, whatever the particular preference of sin, God, we have sinned against thee. I ask, Almighty God, even as we stand here today, that, Father, we confess our sins to you, whether it be sins of omission or sins of commission. Whether it be the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or pride of life. In summarization of our sins. We say, declare to you the heavy weights that, oh God, and the sin that so easily beset us. Father, we declare this morning, we cast it off. And we repent of our sins. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us this morning. Wash us clean this morning. God, where there is guilt and condemnation, we ask that you remove it. I repeat the words of the prophet Isaiah that declares, Though our sin be as colored red, it shall be made white in the Though it be as crimson blood, it shall be made whiter than the world. This morning I ask of you this morning to wash us and to cleanse us this morning. Forgive us, O oh God. O oh God, that we will turn from our wicked ways. That we will turn, O oh God. We will turn from the ways that lead to the destruction and turn to the path that leads, O oh God, to eternal life in Christ Jesus. I pray today, Father, that you will cleanse our hand. That as we stand here, we will not stand condemned. For the apostle Paul in writings said, therefore there was no condemnation to them who walked after the flesh, but after the spirit. I pray, God, that we will forsake our wicked ways and we will turn to you. This morning as I share, that every person that we're going to take into the wilderness, that we will look at it from this perspective as Jesus, that we'll see the positive rather than the negative. We'll embrace the wilderness because God is in the wilderness. That you will train us. You will teach us. You will wash away and cleanse us. God, we will hear your voice. You will nurture us and feed us, oh God. I pray today that we will have a wilderness experience. Because it's in the wilderness that John the Baptist came for preaching. Repent and turn from your wicked ways for the kingdom of God is at hand. And I pray God that is in from the wilderness. That we will rise up, oh God, and come forth. And come out with the power 
a demonstration of your Holy Spirit. Today I pray God over every life and every over every home today. That where we have failed, oh God, as a family, forgive us. And I pray the peace of God. I pray God that you will wash us with the washing of water to your word. That you will sanctify our life and sanctify our mind. Sanctify our homes today. And I pray God, Father, that we will live our life to please you and you alone, God. You will take first place and have preeminence in our life, oh God. To you, oh God, we throw self and we pray, God, that you sit upon the throne of our heart by your Holy Spirit. Today, God, is overshadow us and empower us, oh God, as your people today, in the precious and awesome name of Jesus. And let God's people say, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah.